Want to get into cybersecurity and have no experience? I'm going to break down five items that you can do so that you won't just get into security, but you can excel in it. Starting a degree or starting a career in cybersecurity can seem intimidating, especially if you do not have any prior experience in that field. Fear not though, you are not the first person to ask, how do I do this, right? These five items I'm going to lay out right here, I've seen work in a lot of other folks who have started in the same place you are starting right now and have asked me the exact same questions you are asking. So let's dive into them. Number one, research. Research what type of role you want. Makes sense, right? Now, one way people go about this is looking if they want to be on the blue team uh, side of the house, which is the defenders, or the red team side of the house, which is typically known as the attackers. This is a little bit old hat, in my opinion, as these teams in mature organizations are much more blended now. But I want to say there are a large range of jobs outside of those two groups that support security organizations and businesses. And these jobs are less technical, and I'm not going to get into these jobs in this video. But these roles include things like being a project manager, uh, sales rep or sales engineer, etc. Right now, I see a lot of people who are looking to join security and they have like tunnel vision and they just want to be like a penetration tester or a red teamer. Let me be clear, right? The reality of the fact is companies need defenders more than they need attackers. Don't get sucked into that, you know, I got to do this. No, there's a larger side of the house and they need smart and motivated people as well. Also, come to terms to the fact that your first role in security may not be as a red teamer, not a pen tester, a red teamer. Now, there are some exceptions, but by and large, being on a true red team where you're doing like physical entry, digital hacking, and social engineering on nearly every engagement is typically reserved for folks that have real world experience in those areas or have uh, training in those areas and have cross trained into those other areas. Now, the term red team has been bastardized, so be careful of companies using that term more for marketing and hype than really what they do. Now, before we go forward, make sure you boop that like button, subscribe if you are not subscribed, and hit that notification bell so you can be updated for when we have other great content to help you on your security journey. Also, share this video with others who you think can benefit from this information. Now let's get back to the other four items you need to be doing. After you've done research, you need to do number two, which is study. You found the type of role that is of interest to you, now you need to focus studying on the skills needed for that job. Don't know where to start? Ask yourself some questions. Do you have networking knowledge? If not, look up a free CCNA class. Do you know how to do system administration? If not, look up a free Linux or Windows Server administration class. Don't know how to write a script or program in any language? Learn Python, Bash, or PowerShell. You have so many free resources out there for you to learn. And not really a self-learner, you might be saying? Well, you need to change that. You're going to have to learn how to learn you know, by yourself. But go look at uh, community college courses. Go to those classes in person. No matter what you want to be, a defender or attacker, you need to know the basics. And the basics fall along the lines of, you know, networking, system administration, coding and scripting. So what, what does this mean, right? You are not going to learn how to be a competent security professional in seven days or even seven weeks. It's going to take time and loads of effort. Focus on leveling up your skills. It's a lot of stuff and you might feel overwhelmed. Good. Now pick one of the essentials you don't know and dive into it. It may not be fun at all. Well, it will be fun at some of the times, but sometimes it will seem more like a grind than not. Grind through it. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it, but it's not easy and it takes time. I started doing like computer repair. Then I learned network administration and then I, you know, did Windows Server administration and then I learned Linux Server administration and shell scripting. I did this through a mix of like online learning, um, buying hard copies from a bookstore and some community college classes in person. Now, the, three, the third thing you need to be doing is build your portfolio. Post a few scripts you've written to help solve problems that you've had while you're on your learning journey, right? If you learn something interesting, post it on LinkedIn blog. Go and talk at your local security meetup. Have something very interesting or informative, submit it to a larger security conference. Uh, I helped found a security group at my university called Buffer Overflow, Subbird. 
and I would present at that sometimes. Now we were all young folks just teaching each other, but it was a great experience. From there, I then presented at my first industry conference, which was TorCon, which today is still one of my favorite conferences in the industry. It will take a little bit of time and depending on your dedication and time availability, you have you can go from knowing nearly nothing on a subject to doing cutting edge research and presenting some of that at a well-known security conference. In, in some cases, it can be nine months or less. <laughs> I know because I did it. I did a deep dive into cellular networks. And at the time, I knew no one who knew anything about cellular networks. And I knew nothing myself. The people I saw online who did know about cellular networks knew wanted zero to do with me because I was, and I quote, some punk kid who just doesn't understand. And that's a real quote that was said to me when I reached out to an engineer asking for help to where do I get started when it comes to the security of cellular networks. I spent nine months, 12 to 18 hours, day in and day out, just reading, researching, exploring what I could of cellular networks and their back end. Now, at this time, I, I was taking a break from uni. I was living with family for the first three months out of the nine months. Uh, of that grind. And then when I went back to uni, I was just doing the bare minimum to pass my classes at uni. I wasn't working, I was just researching. I then submitted my first talk to TorCon. And I think I submitted it like, like an hour late, there's like a time zone problem. And I begged for forgiveness for being so dumb for missing the deadline. And, and David who runs TorCon gave me a chance and let me submit my, my submission, you know, an hour late. Now I was waiting for this acceptance email and it was taking forever. I was like, okay, yeah, I, I didn't get it, right? I didn't get in. And then one day I was in my dorm and checking my email and boom, an email from David, the founder of TorCon and, and it read, <laughs> Drew, I'm proud to announce that your 20 minute talk was accepted at TorCon San Diego. I was pumped, but going to why this is relevant to you, it shows that it can be done. And the best part about it is if you're not starting from literally zero, like I was with cellular networks and no guidance, like I was because I had no one to help me, you can do it faster than that with less time investment. Now, the fourth item is networking. Let's say giving a talk is not your thing. Okay, that's fine. You still got to post some stuff online, right? Some scripts and whatnot. But the next part you cannot skip, right? You must network like zero, zero stop. You got to do it. You got to talk to random people in the industry. It's going to be scary, right? You got to get over that. It, it's going to be hard. It's going to suck. It's going to make you not want to be in the industry because talking to the randos does suck, but it must be done. You, you, ha you don't have to be an expert in anything to, be, to go network, right? Go to a local security meetup. Talk to folks. Go to a conference. Talk to folks. Networking via online is only going to get you so far. You need to network in person. My success today is not because of my skills of running a business or my unique perspective on boosting a company's effectiveness in cyber and physical security. Yeah, sure, those help, but it was my network I built over the years, starting with the network I, I you know, formed before I was working in the industry. Your network is the most important part when it comes to this industry. And, and for me and my network, like I wanna see everyone in my network succeed and do great things in, in the world. And I wanna make sure I can do what I, that's possible to make sure that happens for them. I don't know what I have to tell you, but if you literally only get one thing from this video, only one thing, it needs to build, be, build your network, right? P please, please, please do this. It, it will benefit you more than any degree, certification, training class, skill, or anything that you can gain. Now, let's say you have some knowledge, you posted some work online, given a talk at your local security group, uh, uh, or you know, you give an online presentation, you started to build your network, now you start looking for a job or internship? Well, you probably should have started a little bit beforehand, but you can start doing it for sure. Now, if you're older, there is ageism in the tech field. Is it right? No, but I just want to give you a heads up if you fall in that or older age group, right? You're gonna have to work harder than someone who's 10 years younger than you. It sucks but it will be worth it. And not every company or recruiter will view your age as a negative. I just wanna let you know it is a possibility. So now you have an internship, right? Now you have a part-time job or a full-time job somewhere entry level. There's still one more thing you need to do. Number five, continue learning. You need to continue learning. You need to always be learning, right? <laughs> Never stop learning because if you do, you're gonna get crushed in this industry, especially if you're just entering it. 
the field of cybersecurity is consistently evolving, so it's important to stay up to date with the latest trends and technologies that are coming out. As I tell everyone, security is not a lifestyle. I mean, security is a lifestyle. It's not just a one and done item, right? It's gonna take time, hard work, loads of effort, and you're gonna question yourself all the way through it. But if you can dedicate yourself to this, you can do this. I know you can, because if I can do it, I know you can do it. So let's review those five items, right? Number one, you gotta research what type of job you want. Number two, you gotta build your skill set. Number three, you gotta post your work and research online. Number four, you need a network. And number five, you need to continue learning. Hey, are you still here? If you wanna see more great content like this, make sure you boop that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, share this video on social media with your friends. As always, stay safe and happy hacking.